Hey guys, welcome back to the workbench. Dan here as always, and in this video we're going to be reviewing another really cool locomotive. This one is by Scale Trains. It is an SD40T-2 Union Pacific 8803. Now this is a really cool looking model. I can't wait to unbox it, so let's go ahead and check it out. As you can see as we look at the packaging, we have the nice exploded diagram of the locomotive with all of the information, the item number and everything like that, and the scale indication there, which is always very nice. I really like the style of boxing because it's nice. If they're stacked up on a shelf, you can quickly identify what locomotive or rolling piece of rolling stock it is by looking at this label or by looking and reading the script, which is really nice. So as you can see, we have the standard scale trains packaging here, a uh, really nice uh, large box, uh, ideal for storing this locomotive and keeping it safe. As you can see, everything looks pretty good. I've already cut the seals on this to save time, so we'll go ahead and open this up. Now, I have not opened this beforehand, so if there are any problems or anything like that, you guys will see this live with me. That's just something I want to go ahead and point out now. As we take off the lid to the box here, you just carefully slide this off, and you can see we have the operator's manual here. And this is all some basic operating information on the locomotive here, all done in a really nice exploded diagram here. I really like this style of manual as well because it's very easy to quickly identify everything. Gives you a lot of good information on the operations, DCC operations, all kinds of lighting functions, and everything like that. So I'll go ahead and set this little manual aside and we'll keep going here. We have a nice piece of foam to protect the top of the model. And as you can see, we have the locomotive here in the shell. So we'll go ahead and carefully slide this piece out and set aside the box. One of the big things I always do with locomotives and rolling stock is look inside the foam case to see if there's any loose or missing parts floating around inside this box. And so far it looks like it's uh, pretty clean, so that's a good sign. And we'll go ahead and unbox this. This is the standard clamshell style box. All we got to do is slide the locomotive out of its protected cover. As you can see, we have a little detail part here. This is a waste retention tank for the model. This is a separately applied detail that you have to install yourself, so that's pretty nice. I'll go ahead and set that aside. And then unbox this here. And again, I don't see any missing or broken parts, anything loose in the box, so that's also very good. And I'll remove the locomotive from the shell here. It's also got these little uh, wheel protectors here. I'll go ahead and pop those off. And we'll set this uh, basically all aside, and we'll be able to go ahead and take a look at the model now. So as we look at this model out of the box here, we got a bunch of nice separately applied details and we're going to go ahead and start with the front pilots and work our way around here. As we look at the front, we got the accurate SP style large snowplow, we have a scale trains knuckle coupler, MU cables, air hoses, coupler lift bars, we got the separately applied grab irons on the plow, we got a really nicely done anti climber with the correct yellow sill stripe, we have the really fine profile LED equipped ditch lights the large SP style front handrail. We have really nice tread detail on the uh, walkways here all the way around the cab which looks really nice. We got the correct filter placement on the side, uh, vent detail, we got the SP style knockout covers, we have the grab irons separately applied all over the nose here, 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 and here. We have windshield wipers, nicely done glazing, we have really nicely done number boards, the correct a uh, block out plate between the number boards here where the old light used to be. On the sides of the cab here you guys can see we have the separately applied sunshade, opening windshields, wind deflectors, really nice cab and side panel detail. We have the correct SP style jacking pads and on the trucks we have a wealth of very nice details as well including sanding lines, air piping, all that good stuff on the side frames here as you can see. Also on the fronts and back of the locomotive we have see-through steps which is a very nice touch. On the top of this model we have the correct AC unit that is prototypically correct and we have the conduit that runs all the way to the antenna base on the back mounted on the clean air room on that little bit of uh, panel work which is accurate. As I compare this tank and filter placement to the prototype photos, everything lines up. We have the correct filters and separate piping. We have a wealth of really nice fuel tank details, as you can see here, which is all, again, prototypically accurate. In this low profile shot here of the rear truck, you can see all of the nice separately applied detailing. Very, very intricate detailing. We got tons of underbody detailing and plumbing, which is very, very nice. This is beyond brass quality here, guys. This is amazing. We have the really nicely done SP style jacking pads, which has not been done before correctly in plastic. This is the first time a model has been produced that has the correct style jacking pad. The Atherin models that have come before this have never had this detail right. Scale Trains has been the first company that has produced a tunnel motor with this actual accurate detail, which is very nice to see. And again, here you can see we have the separately applied see-through steps on the back walkway here as well. Now, on the top deck here, 
looking very closely, and I'll actually adjust this for you guys, you can see we have the complete see-through grill, which is something I'm very happy to see on this model. Uh, on the Atherin models as well, we used to have to deal with that tower gear which was in the way, which basically defeated the purpose of having see-through grills because that's not something that you would see on a real tunnel motor. Scale Trains has revolutionized this design by creating a low-profile worm gear that runs all the way to the motor, and it is completely underneath this grill work here. So this is a complete see-through effect here. And I know it's hard to see, but it is completely see-through. You might be able to see that brush going through on the other side, uh, but that's a really, really nice touch, and I'm very happy to see that. As we look at the center hood of this locomotive, you can see we have the really nice, bold Union Pacific lettering. We have that iconic lightning bolt style paint scheme, which I love so much. And we have the accurate extended range dynamic braking with all the prototypically correct warning labels. And again, very fine door latch detail work here. This is really nice. Very, very nice grill work as well. As we look at the high hood of this locomotive, we have the correct SP style light package covers on the back. We have the class light plates, the double 8803 number, separately applied grab irons, and on the pilots we have the air hose, MU cables, we have the spare knuckle holders, a really fine coupler lift bar, and the scale train style knuckle coupler. As we look at the opposite side of this locomotive, the conductor side, you can see again we have a wealth of really nice details. There's that back see-through grill. We have the photo etched grills on the top of the radiator. We have the correct RS3L horn, lift rings, photo etched fan and blade detail, and again all that nice conduit piping and the correct SP style antenna. On the sides here we have really nicely done sturdy stiff plastic handrails here. You can see they're really nice. And then again we have the yellow sill striping. We have the correct number of doors and all the separately applied details on the underframe here. And again you can see all the nice fine printing and painting along the side of the hood as well. That's something that's really really nice on this model. I gotta say it's very very nice. On the trucks, you can see we have all the separately applied details again. There's all the fuel tank details, and then the front truck as well, which I'll get a shot of. So again, we have all the nice separately applied parts on the cab, the nice handrails, and then again, there's that really nice truck detail with the correct placement for the speed recorder here. And again, we have some really nice chain detail and all kinds of airline detail and things like that on the undersill. It all looks very nice. So now that we got the bulk of this review out of the way, I can say I can report pretty positively on what I've been seeing on this locomotive so far. That being said, there are some issues and I want to point them out here real quickly. As you can see on the front truck, we have one of the brake lines and it is bent pretty badly, uh, pretty severely actually. I'm going to have to fix this. This is a little unfortunate to see this on this model. Uh, this is a big issue and I'm going to have to address this. This is another common issue with plastic handrails that you see. A lot of times these things can get bent out of shape. In this particular case, because the handrails are so stiff, this is very, very difficult to fix. I'm going to have to basically take the front handrail off and try to bend it back into shape and just be careful not to damage any paint. But this is, again, something that's very annoying, but it's something you kind of got to cope with with plastic handrails on these models. Kind of the same issue along the lines of what we just discussed with the front handrail. Uh, the rear handrail here has some warped pieces. In particular, the handrails on the sides are very badly bent out and actually bent at the joint as well. This is something I'm going to have to address by either cutting these off and replacing them with brass, or I'm going to have to take this entire handrail off and try to bend these back into shape somehow without damaging them. Uh, it's very annoying to have to encounter this issue so much, and especially this severe on this model. So after I tested the coupler height on this locomotive without changing the couplers or adjusting them, they all matched up perfectly to the KD height gauge. So congrats to Scale Trains for that. Now that being said, I'm not the biggest fan of the Scale Trains knuckle couplers and I will be replacing these with KD couplers when the time comes. Here I'm testing the model on straight DC power and you can see it moves very nicely under low speed conditions. It's very smooth and very quiet. As we look at the lighting features on this locomotive, you can see we have the LED number boards and we have the really bright headlight, which looks really nice. Uh, something to note here on the DC models, the ditch lights do not operate. Uh, you have to have a decoder to make those work. Eventually, I will get a decoder for the locomotive to operate those, so I'm not too worried about it. But you can see just how bright all the main lights there are, and that's really nice. So my final thoughts on this locomotive are that it's a very great model for the cost. Uh, the amount of detailing, the lighting features, the operations are exceptional. That being said, this model does have some issues, and it is a very big annoyance when you buy a model for this price and you have to deal with 
cosmetic things like that. These are things that should be getting addressed at the factory and aren't. Uh, and it's not just a one-up kind of a thing where, oh, only one of these locomotives got this. This is on a lot of people's models. Uh, you look at all the pictures of these coming out for, uh, that people get of any of these locomotives, even from the first run, the second run, and they have these problems, it is a bit annoying, you know? You pay this much, and then you have to deal with cosmetic issues like this. That being said, these are all issues I can address, because I am a modeler. I can take this thing apart, and I can fix each one of these issues as I remodel the locomotive to uh, get it weathered and everything. So, I can fix it, but again, for any of those people who want to model out of the box, this is something that they got to deal with a lot and it's something that you should be aware of. So I just wanted to point out those issues, but again, I don't want that to take away from the model itself. It's still a very nice model, and there is a lot to like about it. So that'll pretty much wrap it up on the review for this locomotive, guys. I hope you really like it. Uh, if you want to get one of these really nice models or any of the other road numbers that they have, they're currently out of stock on the Scale Trains website. That being said, a number of hobby shops like Lombard Hobbies uh, has these still in stock and for good prices. So if you want to get one, get one now because they will all be sold out very, very soon. Uh, fun fact on these Scale Trains locomotives, while I was making this review, my Scale Trains coil cars just came in the mail today as well. So if you guys want a review on some Scale Trains coil cars, let me know. Leave some comments below and uh, I might make a video on these. Uh, but it just kind of depends to see if you guys actually want to see this because I know a couple of YouTubers have already made videos on these coil cars and they've been reviewing pretty well. So, but if you get a new, if you want my take on these, I'll make a video, but it's totally up to you guys. So again, leave comments below if you want to see a video on the coil cars. Uh, so that pretty much wraps it up, like I said, guys. Uh, honestly, I again, with the issues that I've showed in this video, I still really like the model, and I'm really happy that Scale Trains is producing these modern schemes. They're really cool. Matter of fact, I'm so excited about this locomotive. I really want to get in and start weathering it, but I gotta wait. I have a lot of projects going on right now. I got a lot of stuff I'm working on that I kind of gotta get done first before I can start moving to another project. But um, just to show you guys what I've been working on, I'm working on some uh, a couple different auto racks. I'm custom painting some BNSF auto racks right now. Got a couple of these I'm working on. One's actually completed so far, so there's a sneak peek. You guys can uh, keep an eye out for these. But I'm also working on my SP SD40 M-2 still. Uh, these are all works in progress. But I got to get these done first before I can work on the Scale Trains locomotive. But I'm I'm really tempted right now. I really want to start working on this thing. I'm telling you, it's a really cool looking locomotive. Uh, so anyway, that'll wrap up this video, guys. Uh, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe here on YouTube for more. Follow my work on Facebook and Instagram. My Facebook page is Dan's Custom Trains, and my Instagram is Danny Dankinson. That is all lowercase. And again, you guys can follow me on my social media to keep up to date on what kind of products I'm working on. I'm always posting pictures of uh, various things that I'm working on, like auto racks, locomotives, all kinds of rolling stock for myself and for other people. So again, follow me there. Until next time, guys, thank you for watching this review, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.